So, I mean, where do you, I mean, I think where this conversation is so interesting is you know, we're really talking about our ideals as a country, right? I believe in free speech, I'm sure you do too, but we're also living in an age where a lot of America's enemies are trying to weaponize our ideals of free speech against us, you know, mm -hmm. Putin being a really good example. If you think he would allow half this shit to be said in Russia, like you're just crazy. Yeah. But uh, there is a fomenting of division. And I, I think it's reasonable for a, a country like ours to really struggle with what's the line between, you know, uh, vaccine disinformation, right? Where's the line between election denialism, like whipped up by hostile foreign powers? I mean, how do you kind of see that? Um, I think that uh, I, I treat it the same way that I treat guns. And I think a lot of people have, have trouble seeing this. So I like firearms. Uh, however, I will acknowledge that there is a penalty to having firearms in society. Just by yeah. virtue of having it, more people are likely to die from it. Pro proliferation of guns means more criminals are going to use it. Having one in the house means you're more likely to kill yourself um, or have a child kill themselves, et cetera, et cetera. That's a trade off that I accept as part of that right to own a firearm. I feel like people sometimes want freedom of speech but they don't realize that there comes a cost with that right. And yes. I think that something that is happening is we need to understand that if we're gonna have freedom of speech, not only are we gonna have the freedom of speech, we need to be able to share it with people that we have vehement disagreement with. And I think right now people think that like, okay, well, I have freedom of speech. That means I've got, free that means that I have the right to say that we should have 25 an hour minimum wage. And that guy over there has the right to say that we should only have 15 an hour minimum wage. Like that's somebody's idea of freedom of speech. But what it really means is Nazis can march down the street and you can advocate for trans children having access to hormones. That's what it really means. And what, but what it means is those two groups of people who are about as, as opposed as any two groups of people in fucking in world history have to be able to live and share like the same government. Um, and right now that is like unfathomable to most people. Progressives can't handle it. Um, conservatives are trying to fucking ban books out of libraries and schools. Uh, it seems like nobody has that principal position of freedom of speech. It's more just like, uh, I wanna be able to say what I wanna say. And maybe people like one bubble away from me can also say things and then past that it needs to be banned, shut down or murdered basically is what yeah. it feels like. You know, there are a lot of people in your community that are like very, um, I think, skeptical of my trying to engage with you more positively here. And it really is because of that exact principle. Something I've been extremely dismayed with the left is, you know, during Gamergate, I do believe in anti-harassment policy. I believe there is a stronger role to play in enforcement. I think they should be spending money on this stuff. Um, you know, I think that when you're prosecuting death threats, that shouldn't just be to police officers. But for whatever reason, there's been a change or an acceleration of the culture on the left where death rape threats are fine if it's targets we don't like. Yeah. You found that out yourself last week. It's that, it's that quote house. that I think I've heard yeah. Bosch even say it. There are no bad tactics, only bad targets. And it's like, 100%. <laughs> I've said that a thousand times. Yeah. And I don't. I, I, I'm truly wrestling. I, I really mean this, dude. I am wrestling with the progressive movement because I do believe in things like obviously trans rights. You know, I believe universal health care is the most cost effective way to move forward. I do think we need like uh, to address wealth inequality in our country. There are policies that I believe in. Mm -hmm. But I'm looking at the culture of the progressive movement, which more and more just does not seem intellectually honest with to me, right? It's doing things that I find really morally repugnant. And I, I don't know how to square that circle. Yeah, and that was always a difficult thing for me. Like the easiest way, the easiest thing for me to get involved in like online debate shit in 2016 was what I was thinking is one, I have a really aggressive internet background, so I'm used to being a bully. And two, liberals are just right on most things. Like no offense, but like conservatives didn't believe in climate change. They thought that gay people shouldn't be allowed to get married. A lot of them, like, were still, like, fucking evangelical Christians who believe, like, in fucking 6,000 year old. Like, conservatives just have a lot of dog shit ideas that just don't have any empirical backing on anything. They're just wrong most of the time. And I always thought that for liberals, I was like, why do you guys run from these conversations so much? Like, just smash them. They're stupid. I shouldn't say they're stupid, but they're, they're just so incorrect on so many things. Right. But now, when, as the progressive movement has gotten more popular, and I think, I think with popularity, I think comes more dogmatism. Now you've got like schools that like won't publish information if they think that it's like too bad for like the trans movement, or you've got people that are progressives that are unwilling to engage with more difficult conversations. Like I'm a, I, I'm gonna stand the vaccines. I would eat 20 million boosters if I wasn't so lazy. Like I'll defend it all day long, but there are legitimate conversations to be had about whether or not it came from a lab in Wuhan, about like, you know, myocarditis and, you know, young men in certain ages. And it's really, really, really hard to have these 
these conversations when you're fighting against like the dogmatic progressive establishment without it trying to come down and destroy you, you know? Yeah. No, I'm fully in agreement. I mean, I grew up in a hyper-Republican household, and one of the things that really, really brought me over to the Democratic side was I looked around and I realized all my Republican friends were like really into religion, and that was their, they were really, really certain about everything. And then I'd talk to my Democratic friends about things like tax policy and be like, well, this has this advantage, this has this advantage. It just seemed to be a more intellectually honest place to be. Mm -hmm. I think the problem with the progressive movement is so much of it happens on Twitter and there is a lot of trauma involved in this, right? And I think trauma leads to this environment where you have to use this certain language and it just, it makes it really hard to wrestle with policy ideas particularly because we spend so much time insisting on this perfect reality and perfect representation of how we want to feel. Mm -hmm. It makes it very hard to form like concrete alliances to move forward and get policies passed. Yeah, especially with like, this is something I've said a million times that like, I think I think it's amazing that young people are radicalized because when you're young, you should be radical. It's age appropriate, sure. but they have way too much power and voice now on Twitter. Like nobody should really be listening to your policy takes when you're 19 years old. <laughs> nobody should really care how you feel about minimum wage when you've never worked a job before. Like these are conversations. And it's not even so much that like you're young and fuck you. It's just like, like having that life experience, it will change everybody. You will never find a 30 year old that says, you know what, at 20, I really did have it all figured out. I'm glad I had that here. Like nobody says that at 30, you know? Um, uh, one of the one of the emails I got, I don't know if you followed my my whole fucking Vosh manifesto arc or whatever when I, I was doing that thing. Yeah. Uh, but in one of the parts where I solicited emails from a lot of my trans audience, just to get, I need to understand everything here because this is like, there's so much crazy shit. Um, one interesting email that I got from somebody was, uh, there were a few like lines, that, like um, streams of thought that were consistent through and through. And one person, they affirmed that. And it was kind of like talking about how like radical a lot of these like trans people can be that are young on college campuses and shut up the internet, blah, blah, blah. But one interesting thing they pointed out was that like these people are radical and these people are fucking cringe the reason why though is because for a lot of these people especially if they're trans they've spent like their whole life feeling really sheltered over this and getting bullied about it and having a horrible fucking experience so of course right. when they come onto the internet and they find communities that support them and they have the ability to like lash out at these other people that they've seen in their real life attacking them over and over again what do you expect a 20 year old to do and i was like through that frame like yeah you know what that actually makes sense it reminds me of like like i did it when i was 20 and i was an atheist online everybody fucking does cringe shit like that like yeah fuck religion blah 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 so i i kind of i empathize with it but god damn they've got so much power today that's like like yeah. before i just be like you're a college kid and you're crazy but now it's like you're a college kid and you're crazy and you just call me cost me a two hundred fifty thousand dollar a year job fuck right, like it's way right. different now you know yeah <laughs> all right bye remember to hit that like and subscribe and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed